The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour for Larry Pesavento's hour. Larry's voice is still very scratchy and I said, you know, I kind of, for my own needs, I need to do it. I may as well do it now. I'm going to do it later in the day myself. In any case, I may as well look at all the different currencies, the different bonds, all the, all the things that Larry loves to look at. Um, I'll, I'll do that in this this hour because I just did my Tiger Technicians hour. I had a lot of questions, so there was quite a bit of stuff that I never got to. So let's just do this. The Dow's up. 628 to 31,308. Just on a purely technical basis, this is what I was dis discussing earlier on. Um, we were looking at the one minute uh, E-mini ESU-22, and it made a high at 10, about 1010 at 38.25. When you look at the vertical technicals of the MACD. Now, uh, Larry never uses any of the moving averages. He never looks at the MACD or stochastic or on balance volume. None of that. It doesn't matter. Everybody has their own techniques. And I looked at the nine period moving average over the 14 period moving average. It said to me that, and I was discussing something that I call the rogue wave. The rogue wave is where uh, the price of something starts to come down, down, down. And if you were short, you were absolutely correct in being short, technically and in, in, in any other way, maybe not fundamentally, but any other way. And then suddenly there's this news event and the, and the price spikes above the previous high. And all those people who say, you know, it's a little toppy here. I want to get out. I want to, you know, and they get out. And the people who were short say, oh, man, this is so toppy. I, I'm sure the price holds above the left side high just long enough to say, um, Aha, fooled you all. So the people who, who, who got out say, oh, no, I've got to get I get back in partially. I'll get back in. The people who are short say, oh, my God, you should never have short this great stock. And, and what happens is they cover and it holds just long enough above the previous high. And then it closes sharply down red and it plummets to the downside. Now, I forgot to write down, why did I even get to this discussion? Was it what stock was it? But we were looking at oh my goodness, um, was it? Uh, it wasn't Google. It wasn't. Oh, am I going to forget the stock? Anyway, there was a stock that was doing exactly that, and it pulled back, and it had that one spike to the upside. And then what happens is, you just turn around, and it's there's this big red candle. And then it's going down and it's back to where it was before, except that everybody got trapped. So I, I talk about it as a rogue wave that the, the, you go to the beach, it says high tide at noon. And at 12.06, you go out to your favorite rock, rock right to the edge and you're sitting on that rock. Uh, you're just about to sit down. You put down your, 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 you put down your towel, you put your suntan lotion on, you got your dark glasses on, you get your favorite sandwich and you drink whatever it is. Then as you're about to sit down, splash, 1206 is this huge wave and you wipe your eyes and you see what happened, everything's wet. And you look around, the tide's going out, you don't even know what happened. That's a rogue wave. And that's what happens in the market. So what I had said was, this is a, a form of that. It's not exactly like that because I don't have the same technicals, but that there should be a pullback from this level with with all the technicals fading, except you had to wait for the nine period to go negative to the 14 period moving average, which it did. And it did a big, a whopping uh, 3889.75 high, 1025, and a whoosh to the downside of 38.75. 50, nothing really. And then it makes a U-shaped pattern, the second one, and it goes back. And now we've got yet another vertical test, except this time, whereas before the MACD was weak, the stochastic was uh, went under quickly under 80%. The unbalanced volume made a beautiful inverted V-shaped turnaround. 
This time, what you've got is you've used up time. The stochastic is under 80%. The MACD went positive and now it's gone negative. The on balance volume never went even close to where it was. This is the one that you've got to be careful. Does it go a little deeper? And at 3886, if it takes out 3895 on the upside, that's fantastic action. But if it starts to decline and starts to trade under 3882 and then under 3879 in this particular down move, then you've got to be somewhat careful. And in all the indexes that have made that peak E, they've all gone to slightly higher highs. Um, this is a peak C1, C2 in the two-minute chart or a peak F and Fs in the five and the 10-minute the chart. But none of the technicals, look, the nine is gone. It's still green in the one-minute chart. The nine is still green in the uh, nine-period exponential moving average in the two-minute chart. The five-minute chart, let's just squeeze it. Oh, it's still very positive. And the 10-minute chart, still very, very positive with a MACD and stochastic at, stochastic at 91%. I love that. So this is a, I said it's a very mild form. And all I'm looking at now is what I normally do is um, I go like this. I draw the cup formation, but I also like to put it into the context of a rectangle. And you know my expression, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. And this has gone to an F right there. And we'll see what happens. Oh, I, I'm sorry, F slash C. I have to give it an alternate count because the technicals, the, the nine's over the 14, but the MACD is about to uh, diverge negatively. So we're going to be watching. The, and the MACD is quite important, but the stochastic was under 80%. Now it's at 86%. So you, you just have to go one step at a time here. And all I'm going to do is say that is a peak F slash C. All right. All right. Enough with that. Let's get back to our story. We'll come back to this in a moment. And uh, here we go. Um, so the Dow um, is acting pretty pretty well. It's over the 14-period moving average. But there are a couple of questions that we had. So what I didn't do in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, the last hour, was the oh, – I should just mention before I forget, the context of the rectangle formation is so important. Why? We'll, we'll come across one of them in, in during this show now. Um, but – you can last a lot longer in a, in a rectangle formation than your patience or your money. So when you think it's going to break to the downside and it holds, if it holds the base, the rectangle low of support, the horizontal low, it could spring back and go all the way back to the top. When it gets to the top, you think it's going to break out? No, that's where it reverses and it bounces and zigzags in this rectangle formation for a long time. The, the dollar's down 27 ticks at 104.15. Should mention we are still long from April. Of 2018 for subscribers to my opening call, we have taken a couple of little bits off, uh, but mostly we watched it go all the way to almost 103 uh, back in 2020 and then plummet back to 89.21. And here it is, even at a higher level uh, overall. But at this point, at 104.17, it's in a rectangle formation that says, I'm just taking a breather. Uh, my monthly chart is in leg C. I should go to a D with the MACD. Hugely strong, nine way above the 14, and the stochastic flat. Remember, flat above 80%, in this case, 88%, is exactly what you want. All the books say overbought at 80% and oversold at 20%. I say absolute nonsense. It's the exact inverse of what you look at. You look at over 80% as sustaining an up. Time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 So let's just go back for a moment to the IESU 22 one-minute chart. Now it's down quite a bit from the high, quite a bit just relative to the one-minute chart. And you've got your double top in the two-minute chart. You see the technicals here, how much weaker they are in this particular uh, top in about 11.07 this morning. So, and you've got the nine-period went negative in, uh, in the one-minute chart. It's just turning. If they've got to wait for the full uh, two minutes to go. But the S says sell right there in the um, uh, two-minute chart, but you haven't yet got a confirmation. You've also got all these peak Fs now um, in the five and 10-minute chart. This is a peak F right here. And there again, the technicals are much weaker on this right side than the left side in the five-minute and in the uh, 10 minutes. So let's just see what happens. Well, we, you know, this could be, a, this could be the, the intraday top at least the morning top we'll see i had a question i've got to do this biochris pharmaceuticals i hope you're still listening uh jamalai in the den um no in the youtube tiger youtube and the den i think um you want to know about this bcrx is trading up 21 cents at 10.38 so i for my subscribers to my opening call i mentioned today i gave about six or seven what i call over the last a few days i've been showing these things biotech very low price, single-digit biotechs. That's when you say they're cheap. Doesn't mean you say they're expensive. I have no idea. I'm telling you they're low priced in the single digits. Uh, a whole bunch of them. I don't remember if over the last week I've had BC um, uh, BCRX in there, but this is I don't know what they do. It doesn't matter. You see this double top here. You remember I was talking about the left side, right side uh, uh, match, vertical match, the test right there. If you look at this and you look at that, if you look at the high that was made around about the 7th of June in the 11s and then the uh, test uh, today at 10.91, you'll see that the technicals are, are, are improving a lot, but they're not as strong as they were. So I'm going to say to you, yes, keep this on your list. I would not want to be playing it right now. I think all the ones that I mentioned have had spectacular moves, but most of them are in leg D. This made a peak E. This is a counter trend rally. I'm calling it gray leg B. But I, love, I like the weekly chart starting to improve. Why not do this? It's at 10.37. Why not wait the day? If it starts to close out up at the 10.55 level, oh, you could maybe take a little bit of a nibble. 
I would just give it a little more time. I want to see what it does on Monday to see if the other biotechs pull, pull this one back and then does it participate. I mean, I had one that I was going to do today. It's called ATRA, uh, Atara Biotherapeutics, trading down 7 cents at 7.28. It's in leg C and it hit 7.68. Every day it was making this leg C from the 6.37, 6.30 level. And look at this, it climbs all the way to 768, still in leg C. And this is just a, a single digit uh, stock, 728. So if these start to pull back, let's look at it for Monday or Tuesday. Just right now, it's a little bit too soon. I had a question about IWM for a couple of people, enough people for me to say, okay, I'll, I'll change my course for, for the moment because this is what we're about here, answering questions. Leg B, a very strong leg B in the, in the this is the, iShares Russell 2000 ETF small caps. I do like this pattern, but the nine is still um, nine is still way below the 14, and the MACD is still very weak. The histogram is uh, improving. That's a good sign, but it's not positive yet. The uh, unbalanced volume is good, and the stochastics at 21%. At this particular point, it should be 23 to 25. So it's kind of underplaying it. But I do think that the general market moving up is going to be part of this whole thing. And as a performer, yes, it will perform some days better, some days worse. So, yes, it's good. Where's the support? That was the question. 171.46 is the nine-period exponential moving average. That was almost the open today. 171.22 was the open. Um, if it closes any day below 171.20, I'd say, uh oh, be careful, it's stalling, and we have to do an analysis to see if it has the power to continue. But it will continue. Um, my thinking is that it's more rectangle formation and that it has an upside target of 178 to 181. So that's looking out a little bit. I hope that helps you. All right, let's get back. The question came in How about high grade copper? High grade copper is possibly making an intraday low. They could turn into. Um, at least a bounce low, today's low of three, there's the continuous contract, 3.64. I'm suggesting to you that this particular action together with, let's look at FCX, which is Freeport McMahon, don't type it on that chart, type it over there in the little box. <laughs> FCX, which is Freeport McMahon, also doing the same sort of thing. I think that the copper stocks are not performing. I, I just... The whole commodity area, so let, let me just do this. Let me just say, if by Tuesday afternoon to Wednesday at my show during the 10 to 11 hour, if Freeport McMahon trading at 30.27 up 71, right now FCX is a symbol, uh, Freeport McMoran, uh, Inc. Copper, uh, they have others, but mostly copper. Monthly chart, I only have a peak C, I can't call it anything else. And that says at some point in 2022, it should try for, for a new high to go to 20, uh, to go to 50, maybe the 53s. Um, but at this particular point, I would just suggest to you that it is not participating the way the very oversold areas are. This is just recently oversold. Some of the oversold areas have been since November, December, like like a document, uh, doc, DocuSign or a, a Zoom that we were looking at. So this is go category by category. So for this category to really start moving, you want to see, I mean, for instance, gold right now is trading up too, but it's in a stuck area. It's not really, the weekly chart says that it is holding the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone, but it's not doing much in it. If you look at silver, uh, gold at this point at 1831, up 1 1.5, it really needs 1857 to 1860 to say, aha, let's, let's have a move towards the upper range. It's not doing that. If you look at a silver, nice green candle today, it's up 0 0.09 at 21.14. It's got the dreaded H successful so far in the weekly chart. Um, and that's just saying that look at individual areas because High-grade copper just took a whopper of a, of a decline, just huge. Silver is in the H pattern, but still successful in the daily and still successful in the weekly. So it could it could trade within this range. Maybe it even goes to 21.43, 21.53. This is a daily chart. I can't talk about it as if it had closed. But if it closed anywhere here, it has the look that says Chapman Wave Roman candle. 
if at any point in the next three days, trading days, it can it trades under 20.65 for more than an hour and a half, there's a real good chance it's going to test the low that was made today of 21.14. Oh, sorry, 21, yep, yeah, 21.14. No, I said that wrong. 20.54. But if it closes above today's high, so far the 21.20 level, if it closes anywhere in the 21.30s today, that says, you know what, look at the rotation in each sector and each individual uh, uh, symbol that you're looking at. So let me go back to the high-grade copper and say, high-grade copper is attempting to form some kind of a tradable low, and I'm going to put it together with wood, and I'll talk about the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF when we return. Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour of Larry Pesavento, who's still uh, not well. We'll be back hopefully. Monday. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, folks, we've got the boat start uh, overture. This is uh, Larry Pesaventa's hour. I'm just sitting in for the hour. We're covering a lot of what Larry likes to do. Um, so I just wanted to show you for the E-mini, remember my expression is a, rect a narrow rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patients. Look how many peak A, B, C, D. Remember the Chapman wave, you're always looking for a buy signal to go to a buy mode, to go to at least a D where other things can happen. So we've got one pullback from the t uh, peak D at about 11.08 today. Uh, Eastern time, we pull back, and now we just made another one. And if you keep looking at the vertical lines, uh, you'll see that um, in the daily chart, um, it's not as strong as it was before, but it is rallying. So that's a good sign. But with this kind of rally, it's the on-balance volume that says it's kind of weak right now. So and this is a sudden pop to the uh, 38.93.95 area, that'll be very important because it says, whoops, 
uh, it's above everything that whoever was shorting, it's above every short up until a anything else today. Uh, we'll see what happens. So the rectangle formation continues, but it did go to a peak D and pull back. And if you look at the, uh, I'm going to get carried away again off, off track. So I just want to show you wood had a, um, a rectangle formation, a fairly narrow rectangle formation. I put them together. Wood is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. I put it together with high-grade copper because it's international, like, just like copper is. And it had a fantastic narrow range between 98 and 98 was the high back in May of 15th of 2021. Then it pulled back and then it just stuck in a range and it went into that range with 95 high and 82 low and it stayed there. And then it made a peak D. My rule of thumb in the, in the rectangle formation, if it goes to a peak D and then pulls back more than halfway of the rectangle, be careful because it could tackle the left side. Sorry, it could tackle the horizontal low of the rectangle, maybe take it out, which is exactly what it's done. It's done almost a one, more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside, like a propeller shaft, a longer propeller shaft here to the downside. Here, it, like copper, is trying to rally. So I'm putting copper and wood in the same category as just an attempt at a move off the low. But in the meantime, what else did the, was it, I just need to do this, was it the USDJPY? Uh, weekly, no, look at that. Holding, very, oh, the, the um, yen made a peak D. It travels in the same direction, not the same percentage or anything as, as um, the dollar, but it moves in the same direction. It made a peak D four sessions ago. It's pulling back in a high level consolidation. I've got it as a leg E doji potential candle in the weekly if it starts to drop. It's at 135.09. If at any week, any day this week, it actually, I'll make it a big number. If it takes out the left side low of the 16th, which is 131.49, uh, if it closes under 130 any time this week, together with the dollar, that's where it's going to pull back. And if you look at the EUR, USD, um, which has gone. I, I did this recently. I showed you this incredible left side, right side arch formation with the price time match that took it almost exactly to the penny of 1.06364, the low of March, the week of March the 27th, 2020, with a double top in the 123 area. I took the plumb line right then. I measured it and I said, there should be a test of this level if you've got this arch formation continuing to see the pink nine period moving average under the 14 of that level by the week of the 8th of April. Well, the week of eight, a week later, in fact, it went to 1.075. Um, how about that? And then it broke down under it. And now it's struggling to make that as a support level, uh, a propellant if you can start to see 1.08. So that's that. I want you to also show. Um, so let's just go back to. Uh, I want you to talk about bonds just for a moment. I'm going to get back to the whole copper. I want to look at Freeport McMurray and a couple of questions I had. But in the meantime, um, bonds have done the same thing. I did a left side, right side price time match, and it took a little while longer to get to the low that was made, the, the, the cluster formation that I used before, which was in 2019, that whole area going into the April, and then it broke out. That was what I wanted to use, and I used so that basically 132, 132s. So I said it should try for the 133.24, uh, 24, 32nd level, those U.S. bonds, sometime by March of 2022, where it took a little longer, and then it broke down, and here it is at 136. So as I'm looking at this, I suspect that um, – now let's show you bonds in a in a different time frame. Look at this monthly chart. This monthly chart has the dreaded H1 over there, took out the left side low and went one to one to the downside, took out this arch here from a trough C and went one to one to the downside. And here, well, the month is not even close to over, so I can't talk about the candle because it looks like a Chapman Wave low end Roman candle. Don't want to discuss that right now. I do want to say that it looks to me as if some some the bond traders are trying to make bonds rally, but until they trade in the 139 to 141 area, this is just a rally 
potential bounce. So that's what we're looking at there. And uh, key support will be 134. It's at 136 and 30 seconds. So the U.S. bonds, continuous contract, uh, a close under 134 says, uh-oh, potential dreaded H again. Yields are going much higher. So talking about yields, let me do this. A couple of questions have came, come in while, we, while we're doing all this. Um, but look at this. White is the 30-year T-bond yield. The um, um, F, why does it, TYX, the, the TNX is the uh, brown 10-year uh, T-note yield and the 5-year Cyan F of VX. Look how they've pulled back from that peak F. It's going to be a peak F because 34.72 was the high um, this past week, and now we're pulling back. Or was it was the week before, and now we're pulling back. And look, yes, the Wood Eye Shares Global. This is a weekly chart. Look at that beautiful cup formation. A close above uh, 34.55. I need to check to see. The price has probably changed because this is a continuous contract. Yeah, uh, 33.95. This here is not uh, the, the higher. Everything about it is correct except the price because it gets smoothed out. On the week of the 2nd of November, it was in the 33s. So we are above that. We were above that. And now we're at 32.50. This cup formation, how we treat the right side is going to be important. My suspicion is we're going to make a cup and a mini handle, not one of my favorite patterns. And then we'll try to tackle the 34.72 high. Let me just double check because that always changes. Uh, that high was 30, 33, 34.72. That's, that's correct. Okay. So, and here is the Philadelphia Housing Index. Look at this. Nice green bar this week, but look at that ugly red candle from last week, and it, it broke down from the high, double top high, and it made a dreaded, two dreaded H patterns, and now it's trying to bounce to try to get back at 364, up nine. This is the Philadelphia Housing Index. If these yields do pull back, so the reason why we are so positive for my subscribers to my opening call about going along a lot of for the first time really putting money to work that we had we had taken tons of money out to have cash ready for some kind of a decent bounce the reason was um i my suspicion was that crude oil was about to pull back sharply that the dba which is the agricultural fund was about to pull back sharp. We we're still long from the 13s they did 20 uh, 23 but now it's 20.77 I think this is going to continue a little longer. The grains are pulling back, and I want to go through the grain. I'll look at the grains as soon as we return. Uh, Basil Chapman, filling in for Larry Bizzavento. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all prices levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Uh, Basil Chapman sitting in for uh, Larry Pesavento's hour, not for his show, because only Larry can do his show. And, of course, he has his, besides all the amazing things that he does, he also has his terrific guests. So I'm solo today. We're looking at, question came up, what about earnings coming up for, I think it was for FS, FCX, which I was looking at before. And what I said is, I can't tell you how the market is going to respond. It's how it responds. It's not so much at what they say. So I just can't say, all I can say is that I'm not sure what day uh, for, um, um, Freeport McMoran earnings come out, but it is so oversold that I wouldn't be surprised if it does have a bounce, but it needs to trade above 33.60 and then 35.10 to say, you know what, uh, it, it's back in a buy signal on the daily. The weekly chart is still terrible. The next question was, Carmax. So I used to have this all notated. Just did a quick notation here. Look, this did a dreaded H. It failed and took out the left side low, uh, right there, the low that was made around about uh, the first or so of May, and then it, it retested. Uh, last Friday went to a lower low. This is a brand new single leg A. So that was a peak E, and normally when you get to a D or an E in that arch failure, it says that so much. So much buying has been performed um, that you've used up all the energy to the upside. But the fact that it actually goes to a D or an E says, you know what, it also means that it probably won't break down after that left side low is taken out. And that's exactly what happened here. So I would just say, now, I, as far as online uh, order, order sales is concerned, I think that for me, that's really tough. I just don't know. But it has a peak E, major top, near 150 uh, in, the, in the monthly chart, and has plummeted down to the most recent low uh, in the 84s. So here, too, it could uh, give some kind of an outlook. But I don't know how the outlook can be great, but except they do not have inventory the way uh, some of the car dealers have. In fact, uh, I know Subaru is way behind. They've even stopped some of the, the, the models because they are – Focusing on the ones that are selling well, I think like the cross track, etc. And I know the other um, different categories in the auto industry. All I can say is it's how it responds. But this is a fabulous move up today, up 660, up 7% and 98.36. So CarMax, I would just say, I don't know when the earnings are, but I can just say that it's the outlook. How does the market respond to the outlook? And I'm not sure what they can say about the outlook because even the, 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 the companies themselves are not sure what they're going to do next. So make sure that uh, it's a 98. If it closes under 92, closes, it can't uh, spiral down and then bounce. But if it closes under 92, it says, uh-oh, just stuck, nothing to see here. But if for any reason on a weekly basis by next Friday, it actually closes above 104, and I'll say, you know what, we might be seeing a little turn. And now let me go back to what I was saying and finish the, my thoughts from before. What I was saying is that within the context of why I was becoming so positive about the market over the last, going into last, last week and early this week, why we have so many positions um, is because I'm, I was anticipating crude oil could pull back. Look at wheat. I mean, look at this move in wheat. 
That's why the DBA is pulling back, the DBA Agricultural Fund. The continuous contract made at peak D, remember how important peak Ds can be? Well, it had that high uh, of 137, 1,375, week of 11th of March. It's, it's down the dreaded H, and it's way below the left side low. It's touching the 200 period moving average, so it could be ready for a bit of a bounce, but that is a huge decline. Look at soybean. Soybean continuous contract peak D in the daily, an alternate count E slash B in the weekly, but that's a big pullback from the 1780s down to 15, uh, 15, 70s, and now it's at 1619, a nice green candle. So the monthly chart is still pretty good. Soybeans continuous contract, and look, the weekly says, I'm in a rectangle, continuous contract, uh, sideways move. I'm holding better than the others. Look at corn, corn. Um, Made a peak D in the weekly. It's got the January falling axe formation, but it has pulled back. It either pulls back sharply next week and goes under 720. It's at 755 right now, and that's the dreaded H failure. Or it breaks out above 780, uh, 805, and all of a sudden you're looking at a test of the recent high. But it's consolidating, and that's really what I was saying, that because I'm looking at inflationary aspects maybe pulling back a little bit, Crude oil, inflationary aspect, pulling back, and that could help the market generally to move higher. So that was just my thinking. Um, so far, it's kind of uh, kind of worked out. Yes, I, I agree. Uh, in the uh, Tiger YouTube, BCRX, BCRX has had an, a, a really nice green candle yesterday. Um, it's giving back some of that today. I like what I see. But you, you want to know whether it's a, a, a got a longer-term move. And all I can say is until it closes decisively above, uh, this is Biochris Pharmaceuticals, until it closes nicely above the 11.32 high of the 8th, all I can say is a potential double top here. And that's why you've, I'd rather be buying in a little bit of a pullback. Nibble here at 10.47 if you want, but preferably 10.06 to 9.83. That's the area that I'd be looking at it. Okay, if it goes under 980, that's, I, I'd say step aside. Okay, a couple of things. That, oh, could I look at the uh, um, uh, steel stocks? Yeah, see how many patterns we've got that were very, very, very most recent high April back at the uh, 39 area U.S. steel. Peak F in the monthly chart at 39.25, April of 2022. And here it is, having gone down to the 18s, more, uh, more than cut in half. So this could have a bounce, but I don't think the steel stocks are ready. And that's why I'm saying I don't think this general market has made the low. It's just a low, another one of those lows. And it could be a better one than usual. And that's what I'm looking at. But in the bigger picture, I think we're starting to see something that says can you cannot rule out. And I heard some of the Fed speak yesterday, uh, uh, um, Powell. You cannot rule out that through other market scenarios that we start to see some, and, and I, I've always said, once you open the inflationary, uh, you open the, uh, um, the, the, uh, the, open the lid of, the, of inflation, it is, oh, it is so hard to get it back. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. But we can ameliorate some of that, and that's really what the market is responding to. Okay. So with that said, uh, I did cover uh, – so U.S. Steel, yeah, this is just the start of a little bit of a bounce, but I wouldn't get carried away. Treat it just a short-term trading. If you want to look at uh, NUE, which is uh, – oops, NUE, which is new uh, – oops – in U E, there it is, which is new core uh, corporation steel. It's the same thing. If you want to look at um, S T L D, we looked at the other day, and I see no. Maybe it's getting ready for a bounce, but not ready yet for prime time. They're all in the same category. I'd just be real careful. The 200 period moving average is at 70.80 for steel uh, uh, steel dynamics S T L D trading up 2.89, up 68. At 68.87, a 4.38, nice percentage gain, but that's about what it gave back yesterday. So that's going to be the thing. So treat them as trades. That's telling me that the bigger economy, together with the home builders, together with um, the timber and forestry, yeah, just says the big picture says you've still got to have a nice pot of cash ready 
for later on. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, sitting in for the hour of Larry Pesavent at 11, 12. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. So we're just about to test the upside of this long rectangle. Remember my rule of thumb? A rectangle formation, a narrow rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. And we've been in this since, let's just pull that back right there, since 10.06, since my show, my, my show, the Tiger Technician's Hour, right through Larry's show, we've been in the same range Un oh, why does it not grab it correctly there? there? Look at that. Is that not impossible to believe? And I've always said that it took me a long time to learn this, that if you start to see a narrow rectangle pattern, don't think it's going to break to the upside and don't think it's going to break to the downside. It remains like a ping pong ball in this horizontal bouncing uh, sine wave pattern. And until it breaks, and even if it then breaks to the upside, the chances are very strong if this occurs at the top of a range that by the time it finishes, it's going to drop sharply. And that makes the 3868 200 period exponential moving average that it was toying with at 910 this morning as support. And then the breakout level, that makes it a target if it starts at any point. If it breaks under, it closes on two, no, three one minute charts. If they trade underneath, 38.77, there's a real good chance that the 38.68 level will be the target. Uh, with that said, I'm going to say, um, we're, Larry, we miss you. We all miss you. We hope you were going to be back on uh, Monday or Tuesday early next week. Um, we'd just love to hear what you have to say. And those stories, 
I mean, Larry's memory, I just, you know, it was like, he'll, he'll say, no, 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 it was a Tuesday. No, no, it was Thursday, 1971. I, we were just at Beverly Hills. We were just, uh, yeah. Oh, and it was Joe. I remember that. He remembers such great details. It's, just, ah, it's fantastic. All right, so we're looking at the rectangle formation, now rectangle formation. It went right to the top, and then it pulled back. So we're going to be looking at this. Um, we, you'll be looking at it. I hope you stay tuned. We've got a great programming coming up. You've got Think or Swim, uh, Kevin Hinks. You've got Steve Rose recorded this morning uh, at uh, 8 o'clock. It'll be replayed at uh, 1 o'clock. One o'clock, And then Steve, and then Dave White at 2 and, and Tom O'Brien wraps it up at 3. Check out Mopey Call Daily Newsletter. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you on Monday.